All right, so I'm going to be showing you three kinds of transitions and effects. So the most popular one is Flickr. Every jug editor uses Flickr. That's going to be the main focus. The second one is Distort Chroma. And you know, it's in the name. It's really good for distortion transitions. Again, very popular. And the final one is a bonus, which is Echo. I don't really see people using this and it's so good. These effects are actually presets in my jug editing pack. So I'm just going to be recreating them in this tutorial. So starting with the flicker, add an adjustment layer on top of Eclipse. So these are mine if I just go through them. Search for S flicker underneath Sapphire Time, add it onto your adjustment layer. And what we're gonna do first of all is keep frame the amplitude at the beginning. The first thing I'm going to do is increase the amount to about one and then head to the middle, then decrease it to about, let's go zero for now. And then we're going to try a different value later on. So one for, uh, sorry, zero for now. And then I'm going to right click the second keyframe and ease in. It's not always going to look perfect, especially if you're using a different frame rate to me. So I'm using 15 frames per second. So it might look more flashy or impactful because it's a lower frame rate but this is how it looks for me you can see it's very strong and also i do want to just mention epilepsy slash flicker warning ahead for anyone who is sensitive to that stuff just a very quick heads up but also we can reduce the strength of it so as i said it's very strong at the moment so if we use the round frequency to decrease it so for example from 30 to 15 we can make it slower. It's very hard to tell, but it is much slower than before. If I decrease it even more, let's go maybe for five. You'll notice you can, well, you can't, you don't notice anything. I think that's the difference. So let me try something like 10. I think it's just a matter of trial and error. 10 wasn't really visible. So 12, yeah, it looks all right. Um, but what I'm going to do now is make it reverse. So I'm going to head to the end of my adjustment layer and increase it to two. And then I'm going to open up the graph. So I'm going to click this handle next to it. And what I'm going to do is just, in fact, I can use the top one. It's not broken for once. So, oh, well, it is broken, but I'm still going to use it. I'm just going to pull this down and then pull this handle over here slightly forwards. So something like this should be okay. Just pull this up. Yep, it's broken. So it's a bit difficult to work with. So I'm just going to use the bottom one. There you go. Something like that should be okay. Let's take a look. Not bad. So what I have done here is made it slow down over time as it reaches the middle and then build back up towards the end. If it's not really working towards the end, then don't graph it. All you need to do is just right click on this middle keyframe and ease out and then change this last one to linear. Then it should be a little more visible than before. However, I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to duplicate this. So Alt and drag it over to my other clip and I'm going to play it. Looks pretty cool. So remember, the amplitude is how far it spreads, meaning if I put it to five, you can see it's either really underexposed or overexposed. Overexposed meaning way too bright, underexposed meaning way too dark, you can't even see it. And the RAND frequency is simply the speed. All right, let's try something a little more advanced. Let's go for Distort Chroma, this one underneath Sapphire Distort, onto your adjustment layer. And the settings are going to be 0.4 for the amount. Hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Head about five, six, or even seven, eight, depending on your clip length, frames ahead. So I've gone eight frames ahead and set this to zero. So now we've got these two keyframes. First of all, I'm going to graph these two before moving on. So open it up and pull the handle for the second one to the left, like so. I'm just going to push this one forward and make some further adjustments, tightening up the graph and then push it back. Change the blur lens to 500, like so. And what else? The steps, change it to 16. Hopefully it should now look like this, which looks pretty good. Um, I don't really like how it moves though around here. I want it to be snappier. So right now you can see it looks good, but I don't know. I am very picky with these effects. So what I'm going to do is just grab this handle and slightly pull it to the right like this. So before it was over there, it's a very small difference, but you can use the amount to help you. So right now my playhead's here and the amount is 87 at the end and after making that very small adjustment you can see it drops down to 68. I'm also going to pull it up just a little bit like that so 61 looks good I'm gonna push it back and then if I play it back that looks much better than before. Now let's do it in reverse as well so I'm gonna head to the end 
and let's go for 0 0.5, 0 0.4 again. It's very difficult to work with these graphs. Unfortunately, that's just how Premiere Pro is. But what I'm going to be doing is pulling this all the way to the right. Make sure it's on level. And as I said, it's very difficult and I'm sorry. So make sure it's not too high or too low, but just on level. You can use this over here, the velocity to help you. So ideally, you don't want it to drop below a negative value for this keyframe specifically. So for me, 0.4 is fine. I'm going to try and get it closer to zero. Perfect. That's great. And then what I'm going to do is just pull this to the right, something like that. Let's see. Is that going to look good? I mean, you can't even see it until you until I reach the actual keyframe itself. So, you know, I do want a bit of it visible around here. So I'm just going to maybe pull it down a bit closer. Yeah. OK, perfect. So if I play it back, looks great. Now, I think it should have actually been a negative value, not positive. That may be a better option because it kind of bulges out. So if I change it to a negative, so by simply just putting a negative at the start of my value, that's broken my graph, but we can just fix that easily. I'm just going to put it up. I think it looks fine. I'm just going to duplicate this over to my other clip and we're going to play it in real time to see the result. So yeah, that looks awesome actually. Wow, much better than what I anticipated. But yeah, that's how you do a distortion. And the final one, let me just get rid of this, is called Echo, which is underneath time right here. So add that onto an adjustment layer or a clip. And I'm just looking on my other monitor. So my settings are 0.123 for the echo time. So 0.123 at the start and then zero, six frames ahead. So I'm going to keyframe that at the start and one, two, three, four, five, six more or less depending on your clip duration. I'm going to change it to, oh, whoops, zero. So set that to zero. Um, you don't really have to graph it or do anything with the easing, I don't think. Change the echo operator from add to maximum, but play it back, see how it looks. You can see it creates a trail-like effect, which actually looks better with other clips. This one's not the best example. The more movement it has and the better your Twixter or time remap, the better it's going to look. So if I place it over my other clip, you can see it's not going to look very good because, well, there's not really a lot of movement. I'm going to try and do this in reverse though, because there is movement at the end here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is keyframe the echo time one, two, I'm actually going to head one, two, three frames back. So here and then one, two, three, set the echo time to point one, two, three. I don't know if that's going to work. OK, I still can't see it. So if I turn it to a negative value, yeah, that actually works really well. So if I just push that back, let's see how this looks. Wow, that actually looks very interesting. I like that. And it's really weird because you don't need plugins for this effect. Very cool indeed. Now, what I'm going to do is use my presets. Yep, you heard me right. It's me advertising once again. So I'm going to let's scroll down and let me show you how scan lines work. So if I just add that onto an adjustment layer, this is how it looks. And you can also do it in reverse. So if I add one at the top and one at the bottom and play it back, You've got it in reverse and also at the start. If that's too basic, then no problem. I've got even better ones. For example, I've got vignette and also vignette reverse. So if I add both and play them, you've got this vignette effect and I can place it over my other clip as well. It's really easy to use and it looks good. The link is in the description below. Thank you to my monthly supporters as always. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.